gender relevant, grow your positivity. And today we're at Squaw Valley on the top of the mountain with the most amazing view, right? So I wanted to talk to you guys about why I started Grow Your Positivity. About a couple years ago, a friend of mine told me about Law of Attraction. And since then, I've been reading, researching, watching videos to get more involved. And I realized that it's always been in my life, but I just had to learn how to use it. So today I wanted to go even deeper and I asked Dennis Shaver, who's a motivational speaker, an author, and a great entrepreneur and a great guy, to talk about positivity. Well, I was born and raised on a big dairy farm in a family of seven boys. And all of us seven boys were born in nine years. And I think my daddy probably thought, you know, why buy a new tractor when I can just have another son? <laughs> <laughs> to do all of the work, but uh, in, in all seriousness though, uh, it was all about hard work and uh, working together as a team and no matter what challenges we were, we were faced with, is that you always had to find a way through it because the more you focused on the, on the problem, the more of the problem showed up. So what we'd always try to focus on as a solution. So we were pretty much MacGyvers as we we're always finding ways to fix things and repair things and, and make things better. And, uh, and also when we lose a crop in a field because of a bad storm, um, do we sit around and sulk about it? Well, yeah, you can sulk about it, but how long do you want to sulk about it? Because eventually you, like, get, you get tired of sulking and crying over it. You might as well just get up, dust yourself off and say, okay, we got to move forward now because we got to feed the cows. We got to plant more, more fields of, of hay and grain to feed the cattle. So it was always about that can-do spirit. So uh, one of the things I appreciate being raised on a dairy farm is everything I learned started in kindergarten and that was to be an entrepreneur at age five years old so I could go on and on about that but that was awesome <laughs> many years ago uh, I was um, I was uh, with this person who I dearly dearly loved and one day her name is Georgia uh, we were actually uh, frolicking and running a race or something like that. And the next day we were out having fun in life, whatever. But um, we, uh, one night we were in bed and we always love to talk and giggle and that type of thing. And well, one night we were in bed, but it was a different type of a bed. It was a very narrow bed. In fact, it was in a hospital. And the reason we were in the hospital is that she just lost our baby and she had leukemia. We just found out she had leukemia. And when I was laying in bed with her, she had all these wires hooked up to her and uh, she had just had the trach pulled out of her throat and she was trying to tell me how sorry she was for the situation that she was in. And all I could say is, I just love you. I'm, I'm em we embraced each other and we were just all about how much each other meant to each other. And, and within a couple minutes, she passed away. And at that moment, I didn't want to get out of the bed, but I did get out of the bed. When I got out of the bed, I started walking away and looking back and I thought to myself, how am I going to carry on? How am I going to move forward after losing one, uh, our unborn child and two is a love of my life. And I was lost. I was completely lost and I had no energy, no interest in anything in life. And so when I walked away, I was they're lost for words. And so in time, I would just I would just go to work and work and, and work and work and work and go home and cry about it, how much I missed my, my loved one. And, uh, and then eventually one day I was out running. I was, I was a, I'm a runner and I was running up this hill. I'd always ask myself, how can I get past these feelings? Like, why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to her? Why did we lose our baby? Why am I so where I'm at right now? I was just lost. And the first thing that came to me is that, you know, if it is to be, it's got to start with me. And that's the only words I thought. And I'm running thinking, what did I just think just now? Yes, if it is to be, it really starts with me. That was a starting point of possibility for me that allowed me to realize that wherever we we're at in life, there are three things that we can be and do and have. And that is, is start exactly where you are, start with exactly what you have, and start right now. We can't change the past. And the moment is all we have, always right now, right now, right now. The way that I chose to be positive is to realize that if it is to be, it really starts with me, it starts with our thoughts and your beliefs 
and the feelings that you choose. And someone might say, well, Dennis, but that person is really mean to me. It's like, they are who they are because they are who they are. You can't change that. What we can have a, we have 100% control of is our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions as we move forward. If I think something's not possible, then it'll never be possible. How could it get any better if I'm always thinking negative? So I would rather think positive because that puts us up on a higher level, not from ego, but a higher level of reaching above what we're stuck when we're stuck in the muck. Thank you for listening and whatever I can do to help you on your way, on your journey onward and upward, reach out to me. Thank you.